Why are Christians so obsessed with the sex lives of non-Christians? Well, I'd like to answer the question, but it's based on a premise that's false. Christians are not, in fact, obsessed with the sex lives of non-Christians. In fact, the Word of God in 1 Corinthians uh, encourages Christians to not get our knickers in a twist over the sex lives of unbelievers. Sex lives of believers? Maybe so, but not unbelievers. So why does it seem that way? Well, because the reality is it's the sex lives of the believer, excuse me, the sex lives of the unbelievers that is such a matter of great importance to the unbelievers. Think about this. Before Stonewall, how much time and energy and zeal and passion did the Christian church have in combating the homosexual lifestyle? Virtually none. Why? Well, because it was at that time the love that dared not speak its name. And what has happened since then has been an increasingly strident insistence that we not only acknowledge the reality of homosexual lifestyles, but more importantly still, that we give our approval. The reality is, friends, that the vast majority of evangelical Bible-believing Christians don't give a hoot what goes on behind closed doors. It is true that the Bible has specific things to say about this, uh, but it's not a principle high on the list concern for believers. What we have, though, is the politicalization of issues relating to sex and to gender, and again, the uh, rabid insistence that the Christian adjust his or her own perspectives on things. We've come to the place where uh, if you don't call a she a he, uh, you can be canceled, you can be punished. In some countries, you can be fined or jailed. Now, let me ask you something. Going back 60 or 70 years, was there ever anybody jailed for calling a he a she? Again, the ones making sexual issues into political issues are the ones who are seeking to escape the plain, straightforward teaching of the Word of God on sexual issues. That's where the identity is. That's where the, uh, well, it's where the tension is. It's true, certainly true, that, again, Christians believe, hopefully, what the Bible has to say on the issue, and the Bible has things, the Bible forbids adultery, the Bible forbids fornication, the Bible forbids homosexual behavior, the Bible forbids pedophilia, the Bible uh, forbids bestiality, the Bible forbids all sorts of things. Because God wants to bless us. And all of those things are harmful choices. And if you ask me as a Christian and you're a non-Christian, hey, should I continue to pursue this? I'll be happy to tell you. No, I don't think you should. But otherwise, I'm probably not going to get in your face. But if you get in my face and you say, you must approve of this, or you will prove yourself to be a vile, despicable human being who doesn't deserve to live. Well, I'm going to say no thank you. I'm not going to throw over the Word of God for a political position that didn't even exist 70 years ago. It doesn't make any sense. So, for those of you outside the kingdom of God wondering why we're so obsessed, we're not. You are. 
For those of you inside the kingdom of God who may be obsessed, take a look at 1 Corinthians and relax.